Hello aspiring SweetScript developers, I'm Eric from Stoic Software, and in today's video I am going to show you how to write your very first SweetScript in NetSuite. Uh, we will be building a simple script that displays a message to the user when they're editing a customer record, and we'll get a very basic version up first, and then we'll iterate on it once to make it a little more practical and realistic. Before we get started, if you are looking to learn more about SweetScript, but you don't know where to start, I recommend that you sign up for my free email course on the best resources for learning SweetScript. You can find out more details and get signed up at learnsweetscript.com. And there's a link in the description for that. Also a quick disclaimer for this video specifically, uh, this video is targeted at people who have never written code before. If you are already a developer, and especially if you already know SweetScript 1.0, you this video will move pretty slowly for you. We're going to introduce and discuss some very basic programming concepts and definitions. But either way, in the end, you will have a functioning, somewhat practical uh, SweetScript 2.0 script up and running in NetSuite. And with that, let's get started. In order to write SweetScript, we need to learn some programming. Uh, put very simply, programming is writing a sequence of statements that the computer, or in our case NetSuite, will follow. There are thousands of different programming languages. Each one has its own syntax that determines the format and the vocabulary of these statements. Uh, specifically, when it comes to SweetScript, we will be writing in the JavaScript language. So, let's write our first script. Open up any text editor. Uh, for this video, I'll be using a program called Notepad++, but any simple text editor like Notepad or WordPad or TextMate will do just fine. So here is our first statement. This statement is called a variable declaration. So in programming, we use variables to store specific pieces of data and reference them later on with a specific name. This statement in particular declares a variable named message and assigns it a text value. This will actually be the text of the message that we're going to display to the user later on. Uh, feel free to replace my name with yours. So let's break down this statement a little bit in detail. We indicate that we are declaring a variable by stating the var at the beginning of the statement. Then we give our variable a name. This name can be just about anything we want with a few rules and exceptions. Um, Usually the name will give us some indication of what data will be stored in our variable, what the purpose is. We can use this name later to easily reference the same piece of data without having to recreate the actual data. Next, we assign the data we want to store into our variable by using the single equal sign and specifying the value. Text values, like our message here, are indicated by the double quotes. Everything between the double quotes will be the text of our message when it gets displayed. And then lastly, we use the semicolon to end the statement. So we have just defined a variable that represents the message we want to display and we stored the actual message to be displayed in that variable. Now we want to actually display that message. Our next statement here involves what's known as a function. While we use variables to define data, we use functions to group statements together to define repeatable behavior. So variables define data functions define behavior. Functions can receive data as inputs and they can return data as outputs. 
in this statement, alert is a function that receives our message variable as input. Some functions are defined for us by the JavaScript language, as is the case with this alert function. Some functions are defined and given to us by NetSuite, and we can also write our own custom functions. The alert function is a JavaScript function that defines the behavior of popping up a message in the browser. You have certainly seen the alert function in action all over the internet, and I'll bet you recognize it immediately once we start testing this out. Uh, at this point, we actually have, with these two lines, a uh, valid JavaScript that could be executed directly in a browser, and it would pop up and display our message. Unfortunately, it's not quite a valid NetSuite script yet. There are still a few more things we need to do so that NetSuite knows how to read and then execute our script. The first thing we need to do is wrap our message and alert behavior into our own function. This will give our message displaying behavior a name that we can then tell NetSuite about. Similarly to variables and the var keyword, when we declare our own function, we use the function keyword and then give our function a name. In this case, we've named our function show message. The empty parentheses that follow our function name should be or would be where we define any data inputs to our function. But show message here doesn't need any data, so the parentheses remain empty. The statements that make up the behavior or the business logic of our function are called the body, and we use the curly braces here to identify and surround the body of the function. So what we've done by placing our message logic into a function is that we've given it a name that NetSuite can reference later on, and we don't have to rewrite the same logic every time we want to display our message. The next step in creating a valid uh, script is to wrap our business logic in what is called a module. NetSuite requires that all scripts are formatted as modules, so we need to add some appropriate boilerplate to correctly define our module. We define a custom module using the define function that is provided by NetSuite. Our module can also load other modules that are provided by either NetSuite or our own custom modules. The empty square brackets that you see represents an empty list where we would import those other modules. Uh, since we don't need any here, the list remains empty. Once NetSuite had finished, once NetSuite finishes loading all of the modules we've specified, it runs this function that has no name, uh, also referred to as an anonymous function. Notice that anywhere we have an opening symbol, like uh, parentheses, square bracket, or curly brace, there is always a corresponding closing symbol. So at this point, with all of our code aligned at the left of the file like this, it's not very easy to see the various levels of hierarchy we have. Uh, so we've made a module, and that module contains a function, and that function contains statements uh, in its body. Uh, but it's not very obvious from the way this is formatted. Now, 
while that's not important to the computer or NetSuite, uh, it is important to us and to other humans trying to read this file. Uh, we can make our code quite a bit easier for humans to read by using indentation to indicate hierarchy wherever appropriate. So what I've done here is inserted a tab at the front of each level of the hierarchy. I've indented my function by one level, and then I've indented the body of the function yet again. And what this does is allow us to visually see the hierarchy of our script. It's much easier on the eyes, and it makes it simpler to follow uh, the structure of our script mentally. Now we have just two more elements that we need to add to this file so NetSuite can recognize it as a valid script and run it correctly. Uh, so first, we need to define the output of our module. With this function, we've defined its behavior, but now we need to define its output. This return statement defines the output of our module. We use this output to associate our business logic to specific events dispatched by NetSuite. There are dozens of different events that NetSuite will dispatch based on various actions within NetSuite. Um, Suite script developers can then respond to those events with scripts. So a large part of being a Suite script developer is knowing what those events are when they get fired, and which ones are best suited for your application and your business needs. Whenever a user loads a record in edit mode uh, within the NetSuite UI, NetSuite dispatches an event named page init. By defining our module's output the way we have, we are telling NetSuite to execute our show message function whenever it fires a page init event. Now the last thing we need to add to our script file is called a comment. Comments allow developers to essentially write notes to self uh, or to any other humans as well. While a script is actually executing, any comments are completely ignored by the computer, but uh, humans can use them to describe what's happening in the script or to provide some metadata about the script. So in our comment that we're going to add, we'll add a few special tags that NetSuite will be able to read and then automatically create the appropriate script record for us. Now the slash star symbols that we've added here indicate a comment. Um, and we've put some special tags inside of the comment. The NAPI version tag indicates which version of SweetScript we are using. Uh, currently there are two versions, 1.0 and 2.0. As of NetSuite 2016.2, SweetScript 1.0 is still supported, but should be considered obsolete. Any new development going forward should be done in SweetScript 2.0. So if you're just getting started, you might as well just learn 2.0 right off the bat, uh, and you'll be ready to hit the ground running. And the nScriptType tag tells NetSuite which type of script we want to create. There are about a dozen different script types we can use, uh, and each one has its own set of events and criteria. In this case, we want to create a client script, which is one that runs while users are editing forms or records in the UI. And lastly, the nModuleScope tag 
defines some accessibility rules for our module um, that we don't need to go into the specifics on right now. Okay, now it's finally time to see your code in action here. But first, we want to save our file as a JavaScript file. So you can save it with your name.js. Put that somewhere easy to find, like your desktop. And now we want to upload that file to NetSuite. So from the home page, we can go to customization, scripting, scripts, new. Then we add our file. And then just click create script record. And if everything is okay, if we've added the correct tags, then NetSuite creates a script record for us. We can give our script a name, and then we need to tell NetSuite which records we want to, which record types, rather, we want our script to run on, and we do that with deployments. So I want our client script here to apply to the customer record. That is all we need to do. Save our record. And after we save, we can see that NetSuite has recognized it as a client script. And it has recognized that we specified a page init function. It did all that by reading our file as we uploaded it. Go to deployments, we can see we have one deployment applied to the customer record. So now, if I look at any customer record and edit it, I see my message. All right, great work getting to this point. Um, now that we have our file uploaded and we have our script record created, it'll be much faster to modify our code and see uh, our updates. So we don't, all we have to do from here on out is edit the file. We don't have to create a new script record or anything like that every time we make a change. So while displaying this hello message is nice, uh, it isn't very practical, certainly not realistic. Um, so let's go back to our code and change it to a slightly more real world uh, scenario. So let's say that we'd like our message to very clearly alert our sales reps when the customer has not provided an email address. In order to do that, our script is going to need to read the email field off the record and ensure that it is not empty. So first, let's modify our message slightly. Our message will only be displayed when there is no email address specified on the record. So we replace our original message with this customer has not provided an email address. Next, we need to add an input to our show message function. So remember that our function will get called by NetSuite on the page init event. Uh, whenever NetSuite calls a function on page init, it passes an input object into that function with some contextual information. The function, in this case our show message, can then use that input to read data from the current record. We can name this input whatever we wish. Uh, I'll call it context. 
when NetSuite passes this context object to us, it attaches a current record property to it that contains all of the information on the record the user is currently editing. We want to read the email field from that record. To do that, we're going to need to use the dot operator to drill down into the context object. So the context object has a current record property within it. So we say context dot current record to drill down appropriately. In turn, the current record property has a get value function defined on it. And that's what lets us read data from a particular field on the record being edited. In this case, we have asked to read the email field from the current record and store it in a variable named email. Now we only want to display this message if the email field is empty. So we need a way to only perform, perform our call to alert under certain conditions. And we do this type of conditional logic with an if statement. So we've wrapped our call to alert inside this if statement. Similarly to our function declaration, the if has some empty parentheses and some braces that delineate its body. Inside the parentheses is where we'll put the conditions for executing the code within the body. So we only want to display our message if the email field is empty. And if the email field is empty, then our email variable will also be empty. So we need to check if a text value is empty. And we do that using the not operator, which is an exclamation point. So we've added our check on the email variable, the contents of the email variable, into the conditional part of the if. You can now essentially read this if statement as if the contents of the email variable are empty, alert the user with the contents of the message variable. Now, there are tons of rules dictating how the not operator works, and there are tons of other operators you can use to build conditionals like this, but all of that is well beyond what we're trying to accomplish today. Now let's upload these changes to our script in NetSuite. The first thing we want to do is save our changes. Then we want to select all and copy. Then we switch over to NetSuite and on our script record, we find our script file and we edit. Then we just select all and paste save. Now if we go to a customer record that does have an email, we'd expect that we don't see our message. So we refresh the page after we've uploaded our changes. And no message. Uh, our page is fully loaded and we do not see a message. Now, let's find this customer here does not have an email specified. So when we edit this record, there is our message. Now, if this is your first time uh, reading and writing code, 
then I know there are tons of questions uh, swirling around. There's probably a lot of that code that maybe doesn't make quite make sense, uh, but don't worry, that is completely normal. You've taken your first steps into a much larger world. If you stay tuned on the channel and on my mailing list, you'll get much more comfortable living in code. That's it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button and go share what you learned with somebody else. I've got plenty more videos for you to check out here on the channel, and I publish a new one every week, so click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest videos. Uh, thanks for watching, keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.